Hello and welcome back to Cal's River Restoration. Thanks for checking out my video of this transformation on this super cute little dresser. I began this transformation by removing all of the hardware and as it turns out, it gave me a lot more trouble than what hardware is supposed to. You can literally see me cussing out the hardware as I'm removing it. So lucky for you, I went ahead and muted that and I'm doing a voiceover instead. There was an actual drawer where I had to set it aside and ask my husband to help me remove it because I could not, for the life of me, get the hardware off. But the rest I was able to remove with a power drill and a flathead attachment. Ta-da! There was one drawer that seemed to be coming apart a little bit at the seams, so I used some wood glue and some clamps and I went along the seams with the glue and used the clamps to clamp it down. Then I used a rag to go ahead and wipe off all the excess glue. The glue that kind of comes out at the seams is a good sign. It means you got enough glue in there to hold it down. Then I'm gonna use this plastic wood to go and fill all of my holes from the hardware that I removed. All but one. I ended up filling that later after my husband helped me to remove that hardware. So you, I just used my finger to apply this plastic wood into all of the holes. Then I went ahead and sanded all of the drawer faces with a 150 grit sander, sandpaper with my electric sander. Be sure to use a mask when you're sanding so that you're not breathing in all of those particles. Protect your lungs. I went ahead and did all the drawer faces and that's it. I did go over the top of the dresser just a little bit to make it nice and smooth so that it would be ready for paint. I am not going to be painting the drawer faces, however. After I was done with the 150, I used a 220 to buff them out I just go over it really lightly, just enough to remove the previous stain and that finish. The 220 is really just to buff it out, make it nice and smooth so it's ready for your stain, the new stain that you're gonna use. After you're done sanding, you're gonna wanna get it all clean. So I like to go through and I vacuum it off and then I wipe it down with a towel to make sure that I have all of that dust off. I painted the base and the frames of all of the drawers with a flat black chalk paint. It's actually paint that's made for chalkboards, but the paint that I normally use was out of stock. And when I ordered it, it was on back order for three weeks. So I've used this paint before, I've had good luck with it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna use it again. So I did and it turned out really cute. Uh, the coverage is pretty good. Two coats does the trick. Normally when I'm painting dressers or end tables where there's drawers, I like to paint the inside of where the drawers sit. But on this dresser, the drawers do not nest inside of the opening. So I just went ahead and painted the outside frame. Once I have this base all painted, I stained the faces with a special walnut stain. I used the dip and wipe method on the faces of all of the drawers. The drawer faces are the only part of the dresser that I'm going to be staining. So what I like to do is do stain first and then paint after because I'm gonna be painting the trim of all of these drawers. So I'm going to use my dip and wipe method with my stain, get it all stained up. Once that stain is dry and it dries pretty quick, I'm gonna use a polyurethane in a matte finish to seal all of my stain to steal, seal all that wood so that it's ready and prepped for me to paint around the edges. I always apply my poly with the wood grain and I'm using a sponge brush. They're super affordable, you can pick them up at any store. And I just do the faces of all the drawers. Then I'm gonna use that same chalkboard paint to trim all of my drawers. I just freehand it. I don't use any tape, I use an angle brush and time, and I slowly work drawer by drawer. 
The angle brush that I'm using is one of my very favorites. I pick it up at Home Depot. It's got a short handle on it. I like the control that it gives me over my work. I feel like it's really precise. I have minimal um, mistakes when I'm doing my cutting in. I also use it when I'm not cutting in. When I'm applying my paint, I feel like it goes on really smooth and I just really like this brush. When I'm doing a couple of the drawers, it's got a spot where I can't use that brush, so I just used a little artist brush to get in all those tight little spaces. Two coats and you are ready to seal it up. I used the chalkboard paint and my polyurethane mixed together to apply my poly because sometimes when you apply just poly over black, it can come out kind of cloudy. So I mixed the black with the poly in equal parts for my sealer. I did the entire base with that sealer and then I went over all of the drawer frames with that sealer as well. I like it because it adds a little bit of coverage but it also gives it a solid finish. And I feel like it went on really smooth. I'm super happy with how that turned out. That's a little trick that I learned from some of the gurus that I follow on YouTube and it is a trick that I'm going to be using again. After that sealer has dried, I had to apply knobs. However, I didn't get a video of it because I was a little distracted, but I got these really cool knobs and my husband helped me to put them on and here they are. These knobs are different in the fact that they screw from the front, so it was a little more challenging putting them on but I feel like the finished result turned out so nice thank you so much for watching I hope that you'll like and subscribe and I'll see you next time bye